Welcome to HeartTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a walk around tour of a garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Uh, we're in the middle of October and we're transitioning a lot of our summer annuals uh, out and the fall and winter annuals in. Uh, this little swath that goes through the middle between me and the camera, uh, or between Holly and the camera, I should say. Uh, uh, some snapdragons have been planted. Uh, Steph planted a little swath through here. It was a uh, Snapdragons back there. There's some purple, uh, a purple mustard uh, that do fantastic here through the uh, through the winter time. Mustard, one of the more cold hardy, one of the more cold hardy greens. Uh, pansies have been put in, and we put up a video the other day showing uh, the pansies uh, going around the front turf area right here, and we're in the process of doing the same thing in the back garden as well. Since the last tour video we did a few weeks back. Uh, we've gotten a couple minor frost and really didn't get any frost down to the ground. We had frost on the top of some cars here. I think back in the western part of North Carolina, they got a little more frost and, or a freeze. And so it really didn't shut, our, it sh shut the plants down here all that much. You can see the clethra there that's in front of the camera is getting a bit of yellow color on it. They get great fall color on them. Uh, Fall color is not that great this year because it's so dry. I mean, it's ridiculously dry out here. We've unfortunately had to water right up here into October. And uh, typically uh, by now, you might put the pansies in and the snapdragons and some of the, the, the color in and have to water it, but I wouldn't expect to have to water some of the other things uh, that we're having to water at this point. Even the container plants are drying out. It feels like just as quickly as they were during the uh, summertime. Uh, it's just extremely dry air right now. Another thing is the abelia, you know, continue to bloom. We've got the uh, three radiance abelia right there, and they're in full bloom, bees on them pretty much all day. A lot of the salvia varieties in the landscape uh, just continue to bloom. The butterfly bushes continue to bloom. And so the pollinators have lots and lots of options out here, despite the fact that we tore out some of their summer annuals back here around the turf. And as you can see, it's after the 20th of October and I, I still have on shorts. I did have to put on a jacket for a few days this week, but we're back in the 70s for several days. Nighttime temperatures actually as high as 50. You know, the lantana is still blooming strong. Uh, that frost uh, turned the, some of the foliage a little bit purple. Uh, there's a tomato up in there, up in there, a volunteer tomato that, that um, uh, lantana has been supporting all season. We've actually been picking tomatoes uh, out of our out of our lantana. The celosia, this volunteer celosia, is absolutely covered in bees pretty much all day long. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there, and it's just honestly just better. This thing's been better and better. But that was a volunteer one. We've talked about a couple times. Stuff threw out from a uh, flower arrangement, and it's uh, re-volunteered over and over. Here's another example of a salvia still blooming uh, with a bee, you know, with a couple bees flying on it here uh, this morning or this evening. Um, toward the end of the day when we're shooting these videos, sometimes the bees have retired for the evening, but it's still so warm out here that those are still going. There's a big old, big old bumblebee uh, sleeping on that celosia. So as you can see, we've, again, we've left a lot of things for the, uh, in place for the uh, pollinators. One of the things that's kind of surprising that the uh, cold didn't hurt is the diplodenia. We had bought a couple small containers of diplodenia and let them, letting them climb up here on the uh, porch uh, all summer. And they've been blooming, blooming and blooming, but I, I figured for sure that frost the other night. These can be brought in and probably kept through the winter, but um, I tend to, uh, I tend to replace them every year. But again, it's still blooming, still budded up. We've got some little conifers that are going to be going in some containers. So you'll see a container planting video uh, coming up. There's some pansies and other things going in the, uh, going in those containers. Uh, one other thing that's uh, still going strong is the uh, African basil. Just never, never disappoints. At some point we'll get a, we'll get a freeze here that'll knock that back and it'll come out. But uh, I, I don't know if you'll be able to see just how many bees are actually on this right now. Uh, native bees, honey bees, uh, it's just constantly moving basically. The whole plant is and it's five feet wide and three feet tall at this point and it just never ever ever quits. The cold will eventually again, the cold will kill it but uh, a nights in the mid 30s haven't slowed it down really. Uh, slightly off color but you know the bees are still, the bees are still loving it. I got a gara 
uh, beyond that that kicked in, <laughs> kicked back in and started blooming. Actually, we took out the annuals and uh, that were kind of choking it back there and uh, got a little sun back on it. And some of the perennials that went in in that back border have not been that fond of all the annuals that we had here, but next year they'll, they'll come on and bloom. The Mexican sage is pretty much peak flower at this point. Again, bees all over it. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. It's a little late uh, for them. Most of them are probably heading back, but the, the yard's still alive with them, uh, even at this, even at this late afternoon uh, time. Camellias, you've got Camellia sasanquas back here that are blooming. I've shown that uh, crimson and clover one a couple times. The two dwarf ones that were in front of it, the white shishi and the uh, light pink shishi are not Ha, don't have any open flowers on them yet, but we're a week or so away, a uh, couple weeks away from that. And up, up and to the left of that, the big butterfly bush is still blooming. And we've waited a little too late in the day for the bees, but we had weirdly had every one of those flower clusters had multiple bees on them today fighting over those flowers. Was, I see a couple up at the very top up there that still have bees on them, but the bees have, uh, have kind of quit. Uh, on those, Holly's right behind you, Steph. <laughs> she always finds a way to try to trip you if you're walking backwards. Uh, that is her style. Uh, the Empress of China dogwood, and it did this exact same thing last fall. It tried to actually open some of these flowers right toward the end of the season. In fact, if I bend without breaking this down, you can see it trying to open, trying to open a few flowers here right at the end of the season. Uh, cool nights will stop that, and the rest of these the rest of these flower buds that are on it will just open next uh, next April. That thing flowered April, May, and into June. I mean, my guy, I had a I had a photo with Buddy Lee out here uh, almost June, and it was still it was still peak flower at that point. And lastly, the Caryopteris is just continuing to uh, flower like crazy, and the bees are bees are all over it this evening. Uh, some of it's gone to seed at this point. Even the even the place where it's gone to seed has that interesting purple hue to it. Uh, and then of course the flowers are purple, but you can see lots and lots of bee activity on it here on a late October afternoon. The nights we had that had a little bit of frost wasn't even enough to knock the hosta back. Uh, it still, still looks pretty good at this point. So, uh, you know, that'll tell you, we just, we just haven't had any real cold yet. The oak leaf hydrangea does have good uh, fall color, and uh, you can see how many flowers it had on it uh, during the uh, during the season. It'll hold those red leaves. It'll hold those red leaves for a few weeks. Uh, this area over here, to me, is the uh, probably the weakest area of the front uh, front garden space. We'll continue to uh, add and make a few changes next year. I think to in, to in, to continue to improve this area. To this side of the path, you can see. Uh, these cooler nights starting to color up the Burning Love Lakothawi. So it was just solid green uh, just a couple weeks ago. The, uh, um, we, tucked this, uh, we tucked this pineapple sage up in here because we you know, needed it cold protected. It's not the most cold hardy thing in the world. It'll always come back now, but now it's kind of questionable that it needs to be in there. But again, it was planted in there to protect it and hope it would come back. And now it's just, you know, um, I wish I had it uh, somewhere else. It may ultimately end up having to move, but you can see, of course, we've got uh, pollinators loving these uh, bright red flowers on this gold foliage. Just such an interesting plant because, you know, it just sits there gold as a small plant all season and waits till it really kind of almost gets cold uh, and then starts growing like that. And, it, you know, it puts on, you know, puts on a few inches of growth a day uh, right up through uh, September and into uh, October right now. I sat here uh, for the Sunday garden question and answer video because I thought everything back this direction is looking pretty good. And what you, you know, beyond where I'm standing back here, there are still uh, lots of dahlias and anemones and azaleas and a butterfly bush. And there's still lots of color, lots of opportunity for, um, uh, for the bees to continue to, uh, to do some work out here. And uh, what, you know, that's one of the things that's most enjoyable. Uh, for us out here in this garden is that every a lot of other things are enjoying it as well. Uh, this annual border that was here on both sides of the steps got torn out uh, this past week and uh, pansies 
pansies went in and some dwarf snapdragons. The yellow are uh, dwarf snapdragons. And there's a uh, variegated radicans gardenia. Uh, this is a dwarf gardenia. Uh, we needed something else there that was gonna keep its leaves uh, in the winter time. So that was, uh, I think that was a pretty good choice. That's a plant that doesn't really like wet feet. So it's, it's raised up a bit. It's planted in some bark. Uh, the, all the kufia that we have, we have several different kufia varieties. It hasn't been phased at all. Uh, there's one there, uh, there's one in this container uh, right here, hasn't been phased by the cold. There's at least, there's two, possibly three more varieties a little further uh, back here behind the, uh, behind the camera. Uh, down below the uh, container that has the kufi in it, and again, the contain we're going to see a container video here in the, ne in the uh, next week or two uh, with refreshing some of the containers for the winter, but duplicating the pansies and the uh, snapdragons on this side. And for some reason, Holly has decided to lay in the sedum. There's two different sedums there. And I don't know why that was her spot to lay down, but she can lay down it as much as she wants. You can't hurt that stuff. It's just incredible how fast it actually grows. Have to uh, use a shovel on it occasionally uh, to get it under control. Uh, behind her, you see the October Magic Orchid Camellia is uh, putting on a show right now. So. Her, her blue eyes and those pink flowers. Uh, maybe that's what she was trying to show us. I, I don't really know. <laughs> maybe that's what she's trying to do right there. Uh, anytime I talk about her, she's, you know, she gets concerned that maybe, maybe she's in trouble. Area on the uh, back of the lawn, this, the salvia and the gomfrina and the uh, dahlias continue to just draw in so many pollinators that we haven't wanted to tear it out. Figured that the frost or freeze this past week would have knocked it back and that would have been that and we'd be planting some of the pansies and, and, and things that we have left uh, over here. But we've still, you know, I don't want to tear that stuff out with that many bees on them. And I mean, there are a lot of bees on them. Uh, back here is where I talked about, there's three additional kufia and there's one that, uh, the variety right there has a bee on it, uh, you can see. And then there's two, uh, actually three additional varieties uh, over here. Uh, the Kufi are great performers uh, out here for the, uh, you know, for the pollinators all season long and they're, you know, pretty easy. There are, uh, there's a perennial one or two that I want to add to this garden. The ones we've been using thus far are annuals. Uh, for us, uh, again, uh, plenty of celosia <laughs> everywhere. These are self-seeded ones uh, back here. Uh, you can see how many more pansies, uh, snapdragons, uh, uh, violas, uh, more of the mustard, uh, some of the dianthus, a lot of different things here uh, we have to go in the containers and for this back line uh, back here and then a spot here or there that we'll tuck some color in uh, for the uh, for the winter. So we'll have an addition, like again, we're going to have a container video uh, when we get these things done. This camellia is October Magic Ruby and the uh, just started to open a few flowers here this week. It is absolutely loaded with flower buds. It should be blooming right up through, right up through Christmas. Uh, really a lot of the flowers have started right down at the base of it and they're kind of working their way up, working their way up through the plant. Got great color back here on the back line. Uh, the back line is another spot that we're not completely satisfied with and we'll continue to do some work on it uh, back here, but we have lots of, lots of open flowers. So there's lots of pollinators working everything back here. The uh, Farfugium is now uh, open in flowers and you can see the bee sitting on top sitting on top of that one uh, here uh, at the end of the day on a Sunday on Sunday evening taking it easy right there but look how showy these flowers are we'll finish up the video in the uh, fall vegetable garden uh, this lettuce right here is called Merlot and you can see why man as this looks terrific we haven't we we've, we've just have started picking uh, some of the greens uh, out of the garden here in the last week. You can see how many, uh, how many salads we might be eating here. Uh, broccoli's coming along uh, as well. Uh, everything just looks fantastic. I think these dry days we're having uh, are really kind of helpful uh, to, 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 the, to the fall vegetable garden. When you're, growing, when you're growing leaves, you don't want a lot of water sitting on top of it. So, you know, we're irrigating it occasionally, uh, but it's not, getting, it's not getting rained on, not getting a lot of dew on it. Again, it hasn't really frosted at all. We do have a frost protection blanket for this. If it gets really cold, 
really quickly. We can cover it, probably buy ourselves another two weeks uh, at that point. The peas are up to the top of the uh, cattle panel at this point, so I expect um, they're in full flower here. There's plenty of bees uh, back here in the uh, backyard to uh, take care of the uh, uh, take care of the pollination on them. So we should have lots and lots of peas going forward for the rest of the fall. Steph did a good job here um, putting these things into blocks and making the vegetable garden a little more decorative. We're going to do that going forward. We're going to expand it a bit and do this in the future where we're thinking about it more as part of the uh, of the overall garden rather than having things in straight rows, just using blocks of color uh, even in the uh, even in the vegetable garden. Lots of dahlias next to the garden over here still in flower and lots of bees, lots of bees on those as well. So thank you guys for following along with the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll have, um, again, a couple other update videos, especially as these pansies start to root in and really show off some color over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching.